Hi folks, we've been away for a while. Apologize that I've been traveling for work and stuff. I'm back here with my father-in-law, Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. <laughs> and behind us, as you can see, I know this update's been a, a long time coming, but you've made some serious progress. It's been really good. On the Woody Wagon. Can't wait to get through and show you what's been going on the last month or two as we've uh, gone through, kind of going through all the parts and everything, and now have really put together a rolling and driving chassis. Absolutely. Well, the last video we showed all the parts laid out on our concrete slab by the cottage where we are doing the work, the main part of the work at least. And now we have all those parts that we're laying out on the slab all completely rebuilt and all assembled on the car. So the chassis is almost done. I just, just have to do a little work on the shocks, but other than that, the chassis is totally done, which is really, really neat. And I did take it for a few test drives. We have it actually licensed and insured so we can actually take it on the road. So it's kind of fun. So I think today what we're going to do, I'll jump around the camera, I'll have Tim take us through everything that's kind of gone into what's been done the last couple of months, and then maybe we could take it down the road a little bit. That would be fun. Yeah, the reason why we wanted to get it to this point is obviously check to make sure the transmission worked properly, the, you know, the brakes, and see if there's any kind of red flags that arise before we get to final assembly. Exactly. It's and, so much easier to take it apart now than later on because right. it's all... It's all here, it's all wide open. So Now you're gonna be uh, actually building the car, putting the, the wood together and making sure all the bolt holes line up and everything in the, in the right spots. Right. Kind of assembling, mocking it up, if you will, before then you, you basically take all the body components apart again, right? Exactly. You want everything to work and fit properly because you don't wanna be adjusting the parts that are already finished. So you fit everything, make sure everything is bolted correctly, and then when you take it all apart, then you can varnish everything and seal up uh, the wood, but also do all the metal work and get all that all painted and ready to go. So you do a mock-up of the whole thing first with every nut and bolt in place, and then you take it all apart. Yeah, so we live about an hour apart in the Twin Cities here, and so I'm not able to be up here, but tell us a little bit about what you've been doing on the car. Well, we had to start out with the frame, and we wanted to first start by getting the foundation, which is the axles, get the front axle on, get the rear axle, the springs, all of the associated pieces. So I had my grandson and I, Ben, work with me on that, which was really a fun day. We were able to get uh, the wheels on at the end of the day, which was really fun for me. And then uh, from there, I had my good friend Donnie come over and help me with the uh, engine installation. Uh, he, uh, he's 82 years old, he's worked on Fords, he's been a mechanic all his life and he's worked on Fords and he just had a great day coming over and helping me uh, put the transmission on and then we were able to rent an engine hoist from a local rental company and then we were able to get the engine in and yeah, then we uh, had a chance to uh, get the cowl, we put the cowl back together, got the gas tank uh, cleaned out and uh, rinsed and everything on there. We got the radiator on, cleaned it up and they got it ready to go. We got the carburetor on, we got the ignition all set up, uh, and, and the engine runs beautifully. Just put together the electrical and the gas, hooked up all the uh, uh, details there with the carburetor and uh, all that kind of thing. So we're gonna give it a first try and see how it works. I was also able to work on the wood part just a little bit. We have a, a wood floor that I, that I just put on yesterday. We got all the right bolt holes in the right places and those temporary bolts. And uh, we did the uh, temporary seat right here as well so that we could uh, actually drive the car. So this is actually the seat, which I just put a little support piece in here, but these are the actual angle iron brackets that will attach to the wood post that comes up between the doors. And uh, so everything is, is very, very comfortable, ready to go. All, all the systems work. We don't have lights yet, but everything else works. Now the foam seat, is that final? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you have to sit on something. You can't sit in air. <laughs> so I, I had the styrofoam lay, laying around, so I actually built a little cushion for the front and, and the one for the back as well. And uh, it, it works just for, the, just for the moment at least. Again, this is just sort of temporary to get things mocked up so we can see how things are, are, are going to fit together. Exactly. And also as we drive it, I mean, we, we, we assumed that the transmission that we got from Tim Johnstone was, was good. Yes. But until you actually get it into the, attached to the motor and get it driving down the road, you really don't know. Right. Um, and so we'll, we'll actually get in the car a little bit later, test that out, see how that's working. Yeah. Uh, why don't I jump behind the camera and have you just go through in a little more detail some of the things that you've done. Okay. Um, and then what's going to need to be done after we get beyond this point. Great. That'll work out well. Okay, Tim, where are we at here? Well, yeah, we have the chassis done, as you mentioned. 
Um, and uh, we just continued to work on things. I mentioned we started with the frame, then we put the front axle, the rear axle, the springs all together. But part of that whole, whole situation was to get all the brakes and brake rods set up. So we've got a brake rod for each of the front wheels. So uh, one on each side and we've got the springs that uh, keep it from rattling, anti-rattle springs and all the suspension and uh, part of that whole situation was we had to get the tie rods all adjusted. We had to get the toe in correct. And of course the springs, we had the shackles and uh, the, the nuts and also the cotter pins that go on there. And uh, so everything's all, all set to go with the front end. Very now nicely. you mentioned you have a shock or something, shock mount? Yeah, so these are the shocks. Tim Johnstone had shocks rebuilt uh, for me. These are the 31 shocks, which are a little wider on the, on the uh, bracket. And uh, so you just run a bolt through uh, the opposite side of the frame. And then uh, that holds this uh, bracket, this, uh, this shock um, unit itself in place. And then we have an arm that comes off and it ties into this ball down here. And uh, so we got new shocks all the way around and it does make a huge difference I've seen in my other cars that I've had. Let's uh, see what you did here a little bit in the engine bay. Okay. We now, now we have an engine dropped in that's running. We do. It works so great. Dave Gerald did a great job on getting our engine rebuilt, ran it up and gave us a dyno test and the whole thing. So that really worked out well. So we put a uh, starter motor on. I asked Dave Gerald, what do you do about a starter motor? How do you test it? He said, just run it and see if it works. So I did, I cleaned it up, I greased it, and it, this one works, works really well. Put a fuse in so we could have a protection for the uh, rest of the system. Also, we decided to go with an alternator on this uh, car as opposed to a generator, just because it gives you more options for lights and for uh, adding electrical equipment. And it's a, just, it just gives you a nice consistent uh, uh, feed when you need to, to charge things. I so, notice, uh, Tim, that this belt says GPA on it. Is that a grandpa belt? You know, that could be a good idea, but I, I don't really know what it means, but I, I got it from Snyder's and it seems like uh, <laughs> they, 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 they know what to do. So that, that's what we did. Also, we put a, a, a leakless water pump on and also a new aluminum blade. And uh, we did the new blade because the, the old blades tend to break off, the ones that are made out of steel. It happened to me once uh, with my truck. But we put new hoses all over and that'll work out great. I'm going to eventually put a thermostat here and I'm also going to put a feed for my thermometer so I know where I'm running. We also put on a distributor. Now Tim Johnstone had that one rebuilt. It had spark plugs provided already for us, which is nice. We had the original block for the wiring that I was able to use as well. I've got new wiring for the engine. Tim also had a new valve. This is a new 31 valve, which uh, worked out really well and uh, it's nice and tight. That turns yeah. on and off the this fuel, is, correct? This is the on and this is the off. And of course, in final form, there'll be a, 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 a gasket or a grommet that goes, goes around the pipe as well. We um, put on a new a manifold and got everything painted up, a new exhaust system. I was able to go to Bloomer. We were able to get a, a side mount bowl on this carburetor, which is made for the 31. Normally, uh, the, the bowl location's in a different location and you've got a, actually a bowl up here that you would use for the other Model A's to separate out the sediment and water. But in this case, it's right here and you just turn this valve down here to be able to drain it if you need to drain it to clear it out. So I was able to buy one from this man in Bloomer, my friend Roger, and he was able to give me one that's already rebuilt. And then uh, we found uh, at the Gilmore swap meet, I was able to find a, a real nice uh, air cleaner. Tell me a little bit about the radiator here, Tim. Okay. Well, this, uh, the radiator I got from a, from a friend who was a, a do an eye doctor for my wife. I bought it for, from him uh, maybe uh, five, four or five years ago, maybe six years. Anyway, he said it was in great shape. I thought, well, I'll, I'm going to use it on the Woody. It should be good. So I, I, uh, tech and I thought, I th I'm going to clean this up before we put it together because uh, you know, who knows what's in there. Well, it turns out that there was just a, a huge um, mouse nest in there, and it took forever to get it cleaned out, just continually coming up with junk as we rinsed it from the bottom side up, we backwashed it and then put radiator cleaner in and we kept washing and washing. And I think we got all the junk out and I think it's gonna work out well. I think um, you had some mice nest problems in the fuel tank too. Can you take <laughs> oh, us through that? Man. Yeah, that was, that was something else. Well, I, I had two cowls. The first cowl is this one right here and I, I really liked it, but the gas tank had some junk in it. It looked like a, maybe a grocery bag, one of these plastic grocery bags that you get. And it, it must have gotten sucked in there with, a, with something or another. And uh, anyway, it was all in the tank and I, I wasn't sure if I could get it all cleaned out. So I kept rinsing it and rinsing it and I kept getting more and more stuff. So I said, you know, I've got another tank on another cowl. I'm gonna use that one. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll bring it down and, and use it. Cause we're doing all this work at our townhouse right now just because that's where I am right now. But at any rate, I, I took it apart from that other cowl and brought it here and I started rinsing it. And uh, 
again, mice had gotten in there and they had done uh, a huge, made a huge mess and made huge nests. So I rinsed it the first time and that's how much junk I got out of it. I rinsed it again the second time and that's how much junk I got out of it, plus a fuel strainer that had broken off. I rinsed it the third time and that's how much junk I got out, plus a little stick. And then the fourth time I got hardly anything, but I kept rinsing it, rinsing it, rinsing it. And I think we got a clean tank now, but we're gonna take it into a, to a gas tank shop and just get it checked out before we actually do the final assembly. All right, well show us a little bit from what's going on inside here. All right, well, the steering was, a, was an issue that we needed to take care of. I had a couple of steering columns. I brought it to Roger Sturtz in Bloomer, the one I bought the, the carburetor from, and he rebuilt it for me, so it's nice and tight now and it works great. The uh, controls were all actually nice and finished already, so we didn't have to do anything with those. And he said he only had to just pe put in one piece in the steering uh, down below, the steering box down below. We need to get the uh, control put in and all that for the lights, but that'll work great. But also I want to mention, this is a nice uh, polished brass piece right here. And we, we discovered on our truck when we were re rebuilding our truck that this is brass, and we're gonna leave it there with that nice shiny uh, brass color. Jeff shined that up really nicely. Good job, Jeff. This uh, uh, con in instrument panel came from Tim. Uh, he had already had this in, in his uh, package there with a, with a switch and with a rebuilt a speedometer and a brand new ammeter. But he also had a, a brand new emergency brake handle, which is so nice, it's beautiful. But he also had a couple of the shifter handles that we were able to rebuild. Nolan and I took the shifter apart one day and uh, inserted the new uh, shifter uh, handle, and that, that was really, really, really neat. Then we just painted up the pedals, the brake clutch, they're all adjusted, they worked really well. So all of the controls work perfectly as they, as they should. So I'm glad for that. So then I wanted to, uh, continue the process of putting my wood floor in. So I put the front half of the wood floor in, and that comes back to right here. Uh, and um, the seat has got a base already that came with the kit, and then this piece uh, is a structural piece that holds the uh, front and back pieces together with a series of bolts that'll go through when I get done with it. Also, I, I was able to get this uh, seat uh, base from Tim, and uh, it needs to just have a spring, and I got a spring for it. Uh, I need to just check to be sure it's going to be adequate and then it needs to be recovered. And I've, I've, I met a guy from uh, the show of, over at Gilmore. It's called Classic Upholstery out of Lindstrom. And uh, I'm gonna think be working with him on putting all the, all the new fabric together, um, coverings. Um, Tim had also given us uh, three rolls of, of uh, coverings for the seats, which is uh, gonna work out great. And then we need to do the back as well, get that um, spring and, and uh, cushion all redone. We've got the good sample, we've got the original covers for the seats, which will work out for a good, uh, a good model for him, um, pattern for him to use. So, so that'll work out great. So then I've been working on the uh, floor um, situation. There's two parts of the floor. Yesterday I worked on the back part. I took all the, the board, boards off and then uh, separated, separated them off into two pieces and then figured out from the plans that came from original Henry Ford and uh, he, uh, showed where all the bolt holes were supposed to go. So I compared all of those, and then I compared with the actual holes in the, in the frame where they, all the bolts go down, got it exactly centered on the frame, on the end piece right here, and got that all squared away. And then I discovered that you need to put the wheel wells, uh, the inner wheel wells, uh, in at the same time that you put the floor uh, in so that everything will fit together, kind of sandwiches together. And there's some more bolts that need to put on, but you actually have to put the whole body sort of together before you put the final bolts in to make sure everything is right where it needs to be. And then uh, you put a series of holes across the, the top, and that actually screws up into the wood body that comes around, and there's other supports that need to go on. But we can get into detail on that later on. So the next step is to, uh, to actually put the uh, wood sidewalls on, mount the doors, mount the roof, that kind of has to happen early on because that holds everything together and then we can do the tailgate. But we'll be putting all of that together and getting a video off to you shortly showing how that works. So, so we're making progress. I'm feeling very good about it. And I think we're gonna go for a test ride now. Should be fun. That sounds like a great plan. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we are ready to go. Runs good. Run, it does. It really does run well. How's your mirrors? <laughs> May not be completely legal.
Well, thanks, Tim. Uh, that's exciting, all the stuff that you guys have been doing on well, the car. It's been I, really fun. Yeah. I, one of these days, i got to get up and actually work alongside you. Um, <laughs> that would be fun, too. But I know for those that have been following along on the series, if, if you're just joining us, the, the series, the whole restoration vlog, if you will, is linked uh, on our Facebook page down at the bottom. Feel free to like and subscribe and join us as we continue to uh, uh, finish this car. I think the stated goal is to maybe have this at back to the 50s next summer in July sometime. That'd be the goal. June, I think it'll July. Work. Yeah. So um, we'll be continuing to work on the car through the winter. Uh, we've got a, a guy in mind for body repair, so stay tuned on that. But uh, as always, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.